Good morning. What we're going to do is learn how to do a little bit of logistics optimization. It's it's actually a very, very nifty and cool thing uh, to do in general, mainly because we're always trying to know, and this is this is more of a shipping problem, so that we're always trying to know, all right, this is what we're producing here. These are our clients there. Where should we ship from, to whom, and how much? Right, so in this case, a company has three plants in Akron, Toledo, and Dayton. Each plant has the option to ship to five clients in these cities. The company wants to minimize its shipping costs while fulfilling demands. How should they do that? So you've got these three plants, Akron, Toledo, Dayton, from which you can ship to Milwaukee. So these are the places where you have your clients. Milwaukee, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Youngstown. Now, this would be your general schedule setup. So we also know that from each plant, you know the shipping costs. If you were to ship from Akron to Milwaukee, it costs eight dollars per piece meal at less than truckload, full full truckload, whatever your basis is for calculation. Uh, to Chicago. Eight dollars, uh, Detroit six dollars, Cleveland five dollars, four dollars. So you can say, I want to know how much it. Or your company has this entire entire schedule ready, where it says from Dayton to Cleveland is three dollars, from Dayton to Youngstown it's six dollars. Um, sorry, from Dayton to uh, Cleveland it's um, Detroit it's five dollars. Dayton to Cleveland, it's five dollars, and Dayton to Youngstown is nine dollars. While from Toledo to Cleveland is three dollars, and Toledo to Youngstown is six dollars. So based on that, you so this information you'll already have with your company. So I'm going to mark it in a version of sort of a um, light pastel color or something like that, so that it's not overwhelmingly difficult to read. And then, based on that, so you're saying that we also supply certain things. So, Akron has a capacity of 400 units, assume per day, per period, whatever it is, um, 380 uh, units, or you could even say that's your typical uh, batch output. Uh, Dayton, 420 units the, at each of your plants, so let's mark these two. In this case, let's mark it using another um, uh, version. Suppose that. So that's your. This is how much each of your plants produce. These are your shipping costs from plants to your city. So this would be shipping a cost from plant to city. And then this is the number to ship from plant to city. So from plant uh, to the city. Okay, given that, it's now easy to calculate. See, this is your general structure. You want to know how much. This is what we want to change, right? So in this case, we'll put a slightly different color to it, assume this one. So this is what we want to change. And they'll be saying, if we were to ship one unit from Akron to Milwaukee, and one unit from Akron to Chicago, and one unit from all to all, what exactly are our shipping costs? We know our shipping costs, so what is our total cost? So our total cost, therefore, would be nothing but whatever you're shipping from Milwaukee. So this times that. So, and so Akron to Milwaukee, one. Akron to Milwaukee costs $8. So $8. Um, Toledo to Milwaukee, one. Toledo to Milwaukee costs $6. So 8 and 6, 14. Dayton to Milwaukee, one. Dayton to... Um, Milwaukee shipping course, $3. So 
All you're saying is it's 1 times 8 plus 1 times 6 plus 1 times 3. That's 70. So we can do it that way, or else we can try a sum product, which is a combination of this and a combination of that. And it should arrive at the same number. So we could just say that, all right, so this is, if we were to just ship one product from each place to the others, without assuming the economies of scale and all that stuff, so you're assuming price is going to be fixed regardless of how much you send from where to where, right? But otherwise, you can, you know, you'll always be able to create a marginal cost set where as it increases, it increases at a decreasing rates, right? Which basically means the more you ship, um, the lesser it is per piecemeal in terms of cost. So, same thing out here, 8 times 1 plus 5 times 1 plus 4 times 1 is 17, and 6 times 1 plus 4 times 1 plus 5 times 1 is 15. So we could simply do a similar sum product and just pull it through. And we've got that. Now this is nothing but so what's your total shipping across all your plants to all your major clients and cities is equal to sum of this set. And you'll see that if you were to do this sum, in this case it should be C20, um, and the total shipping cost for shipping one product from each plant to each warehouse is going to be $81. Now, question is, however, shipping one product doesn't actually, so altogether you're shipping three products to Milwaukee, when the demand is 180 products milwalking. You're shipping three products to Chicago, while well, demand in Chicago is 80. Shipping three products to Detroit, demand is 200. Shipping three to Cleveland, demand is 160. Shipping three to Youngstown, demand is 220. So you're not meeting demand or you're not fulfilling demand. So you need to fulfill demand. On the other hand, you're only shipping five units from Akron, while Akron's capacity is 400. You're shipping five units from Toledo, and it's only, uh, and your capacity is 380. You're shipping five units from Dayton, and your capacity is 420. And you can see this five basically comes from nothing but, the, this is the total that you're shipping from this whole set. So this is nothing but, is equal to the sum of this whole set. And that's five units. So let's try and see if we can optimize it so that here are the things we want to do. We want to reduce shipping or reduce it or minimize shipping. So we'll put that into um, sort of a yellowish um, bit. And we want to, what we want to minimize shipping costs, we also want to ensure that we are fulfilling all our supply set and we're also making sure that we're fulfilling all our demand requirements. That's right out there. So let's try and do that. I'm going to go to Tools, Open Solver, and you'll see that the solver bits have been filled already. We're saying that the set objective is so I'll just do a quick read and then we'll do a full ROM. So the solver objective is B20, which is you want to the shipping cell, the shipping cost cell, and we want to minimize it. What do we want to change? We want to basically change the entire shipping structure, right? Number of products we want to ship from which plant to which city. And here are our constraints. The first constraint is that your the total you want to ship should be less than or equal to the supply you have or you know the amount of capacity that you have at each plant so that's b18 to b sorry b8 uh, to b10 should be less than b16 to b18 the second is that the total you're shipping so 
or from like three, 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 mm -hmm. which is the total to Milwaukee, total to Chicago, total to Detroit, total to Cleveland, total to Youngstown, should be greater than or equal to, because you're always trying to fulfill demand. So that's why it's greater than or equal to market demand by city, which is 180, 80, 200, 160, and 220, which means three should, right now three should at least be 180, three should at least be 80, three, three should at least be 200 and safer. And the third one, of course, is the fact that your entire shipping set, the number of products they ship, should be greater than or equal to zero. You can't have a negative number. We don't need to provide integer, but we could if you wanted to do it. There's a mechanism because it says, well, this is one non-constraint or, you know, it's non-negative. You could also add, but let's reset it and run the whole thing through. So once again, we're saying, what's our objective? Our objective is to minimize shipping costs. If we want to minimize it, should say minimize it by changing what? We're saying by changing this set. And what are the constraints? The first constraint is that the total that we produce should be less than or equal to, oh, sorry, the total that we're shipping should be less, less than or equal to the total we can actually produce. You can't ship more than what you can produce. The next one is the fact that what you're shipping to each city or to each client is greater than or equal to what the clients need. So let me do that again. So what you're shipping to each client should be greater than or equal to what your clients need. So this oftentimes comes from your predictive forecasting or our contracts. And then the third one is the very fact that these should be greater than or equal to zero. And let's also say that they should be integers. They should be an integer, right? They should, should all, be, all be integers. So we've got this whole set once again. We want to minimize shipping costs by changing cells C8 to G10, which is this whole set. What are the constraints that we have? Our constraints are at B8 to B10, which is nothing but the total that you're shipping from each plant should be less than or equal to the capacity to ship from each plant. The second one is that the total that you're shipping to your clients, which is C12 to G12, ought to be less than mm, the amount that's demanded or ordered by the client. So you always want to fulfill the orders. So C12 to G12 is should be greater than or equal to C14 to G14. We're also saying that your the number of products you ship from each place to your clients, from each plant to your clients, ought to be um, integers and then the last one is they ought to be greater than or equal to zero and then we'll try clicking solve and it says it found a solution so we say okay let's see what the solution says you think all right in order to fulfill all customer demand and get as close as you can in terms of um, sending things from plants based on their own capacity. This is what your shipment setup should be. You're saying from Akron, don't ship to Milwaukee, don't ship anything to Chicago, don't ship anything to Detroit, don't ship anything to Cleveland, only ship to Youngstown, ship 220 units. From Toledo, don't ship anything to uh, Milwaukee, don't ship anything to Chicago, ship 200 units to Detroit and 160 units to Youngstown. 
and zero so, and clear 160 units to Cleveland, sorry, and zero units to Youngstown. From Dayton, ship 180 units to Milwaukee and 80 units to Chicago, but don't ship anything to Detroit, Cleveland, or Youngstown. Based on that, you're fulfilling all the client requirements or the client demands, 180, 80, say, they, they all match. And therefore, your shipping cost for each set should be this much. And your total shipping cost, that's the minimum shipping cost you can get by fulfilling, from fulfilling all demands, yet making sure that your capacity is managed, is exactly that. Now, it also gives you a very interesting hint, which goes back to this idea of unused capacity, which is, are you producing more than what you need? And your unused capacity would be nothing but, so we'll say the same thing uh, from these three plants, and we want to see what is the unused capacity. It's nothing but how much you produce minus how much you're shipping. So, and then if we were to just run these, basically says that Akron, the Akron plant has 180 units as unused capacity. Um, Toledo has 20 units as unused capacity and Dayton has 160 units of unused capacity, which of course you can say, what therefore is it in percentage to have a better sense of so which, be, which would typically mean that, all right, in this case, this is nothing but how much unused capacity you have out of the total capacity you had. And if I were to convert that into percentage, all I needed to do is, um, say, times 100. And you have a quick sense of the unused capacity in each place. So you're saying that Toledo only has 5.26% unused capacity. Um, Dayton has 38. So Dayton and Akron are looking a bit problematic because you're ending up producing too much out there, but not being able to ship enough from there, which means you've got a lot of inventory lying low which could basically mean start, start looking for clients closer to that area where shipping costs might be lower, or try cutting down on production costs out there, out in these plants, and that's how you solve it. So in this case, again, it gives you a good sense of from which plant should you ship to which customer in what area based on shipping costs while maintaining two specific sets. You want to make sure that how much you're shipping is less than or equal to how much you can ship and how much you're shipping actually is greater than or equal to which means it fulfills the demand of whatever your client's requirements are or client's orders are. So this gives you a good sense and then based on that, that's your minimum shipping cost that would be useful to budget for shipping that will then be used somewhere else. Thank you very much.